Welcome to Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. Today's guest is Mr. Charles Binks Collier, the CEO of Circular. And this is our first live podcast from SPC Advance in Atlanta. Welcome, sir. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Good. Thanks for being our, our first of six. We're doing some amazing live podcasts here. We're excited about it and hope this becomes a new tradition. Can you tell us a little bit about your background first? Yeah, so I am from Toronto, Canada. I'm representing the Canadian, I guess, reuse. <laughs> Super happy to be here, but I am a Laurier graduate. I have a background in business and computer science. And through that education, I was introduced to not only packaging in the form of Lactalis Canada, the dairy brand, but also smart cities, which is a major thing in Waterloo, I guess you could say, where that university is located. So that's sort of where Circular came to be. It was a mixture of both. And it's circular is the happy creation of packaging, but also technology integrated into that. Well, tell us more about circular. What, what is it exactly that you do there? Yeah. So circular is helping brands reuse their packaging. The way we do that is by setting up collection sites across the GTA or sorry, the greater Toronto area <laughs> and Guelph, which is a neighboring city. The way we actually do that is we have these green little collection bins in these stores where customers can return emptied out packaging. We then collect that packaging, we sanitize it, and we return it directly right back to that brand. Oh. In terms of actually incentivizing customers to do this, because that's always a big part of it, it started out with no incentivization. We, you know, we didn't have any of the technology there at first. We just wanted to see, will people do this with nothing? And the answer was yes. So <laughs> we were super happy with that. But as you know, any company must do, we have to bring this to everyone. And we always sort of joke about this, but circular is being built for the lazy environmentalist. The I person who wants to participate, <laughs> but it's not going to go to that zero waste gro or refillery. Right. So we're trying now to add things like deposits and rewards so that for the consumer, it's incredibly attractive and a system that they can't say no to really. Oh, that's wonderful. Tell us more about, you, you said you were surprised by the, the rates of, of adoption. Mm -hmm. So you found consumers to be amenable to this idea. Yeah. I mean, it's actually lovely how engaged they are. We find that most often when a brand joins our system of packaging, not only is it because they want to, you know, reduce packaging waste, but it's because they've been telling us, you know, our customers are calling us, they're asking us for a solution. Right. And, you know, reusable packaging is something that's not like compostable packaging or biodegradable packaging, simply because you have to have that base infrastructure there right. to handle it. And currently for reuse, there is none, unfortunately. So what we've built is that infrastructure so that those brands can participate. But for consumers, they're really excited about it. So right. that's the thing that we love to build on. And it's nice going to events and what have you to actually get to talk with them because more often than not, they're more excited about it than us. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. And are you, are you creating the packaging or are you working with the brands to create the packaging and then you're handling more of the logistics side of the pickup and mm -hmm. redeliver. Great question. So we have decided to first start by looking at companies that are already packaged in glass. Yeah. Glass is a reusable format. It's pretty much very, it's very good to reuse essentially just yeah. because it can easily be sanitized. Mm -hmm. You use it at home for all your yeah. drinking. So what we really said to ourselves was why reinvent the wheel here? Let's start with companies that are already in reusable formats. So that's why we focus on glass jars. Yeah. We do eventually hope to transition to, we say the whole grocery store or the rest of the grocery store. Right. But at first it is those glass pieces of packaging. And so what we're now starting to see is that we're also helping companies pick the right labeling and helping them source. So we're starting to talk with label suppliers as well to make sure that that labeling is also, you know, able to be reused right. uh, either through the washing process or easily removed before the washing process. Right. So that's the type of thing that we're looking at right now. And down the line, we've already started looking into actually helping source, you know, gloss jars right from the beginning, but right. also I'm a, a big fan and. I believe really, truly that as reusable packaging will develop, there will be a ton of new innovation in the space when yeah. it comes to reusable formats that are maybe flexible or I'm not the innovator <laughs> on that regard, <laughs> sure. but I am really excited to see the innovation there. 
I agree hundred percent. There are every day I'm learning something new about packaging and this is 25 years in the industry for mm -hmm. me. So absolutely agree with you. Let's talk a little bit about the SPC because we're at the event. Mm -hmm. How has that helped your company be more sustainable or network in the industry? Mm -hmm. So one thing that I truly believe is really important for sustainable packaging to actually take off is the collaboration in this space. And one thing that we're realizing is that for reusable packaging in particular to be a solution that consumers will latch onto, yeah. it has to be widespread among not only, you know, product depth, but also breadth. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that's really important, especially when it comes to SBC, it's about bringing those companies together. And that also is something that's really important when it comes to legislation. Legislation, we were actually just in Germany for three months for an accelerator that specialized in the circular economy. Wow. And one of the things that we realized there was one, they're way ahead of us in almost every regard, <laughs> but true. they also have figured out the legislation piece to yeah. a pretty good extent for reusability, but also recyclability. Yeah. And it's amazing to see the changes that they've gone through legislatively that have produced all these amazing aspects of the recycling and review systems. Totally agree. We're way behind and it's time here in North America that we step it up. Mm -hmm. And so well done, kudos to you and your team for, for taking that on. That challenge is, it's a big task, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. like you said, at the SPC and, and events similar to this that they host, it's, it's a, it's an environment of collaboration and it seems to be, there aren't secrets here. You know, of course, people have proprietary things, but what I'm seeing is people want to work together to solve this issue. Is that what you're saying you're seeing as well? Yeah, I, I think that's definitely the general theme. It's yeah. companies of all sizes and types are realizing that sustainability when it comes to packaging is not only something that will help their bottom line. It's something that will, you know, save the earth. And right. you know, that's right. why the, you know, we're all here for the sustainability part of this is at the end of the day, we want to create a system that, you know, protects our environment. And right. I think everyone, it's something that's hard not to get behind, <laughs> quite yeah. frankly. Yeah. And another question I had, I'm fascinated by reusable packaging. Are you finding that reusable packaging makes more loyal customers? Mm -hmm for the, for that brand that participates? Yeah. So, I mean, great question. I think in general, the circular economy produces a ton of benefits, whether it is reusables or not, but reusables in particular, I think provide a really interesting touch point for the consumer because when they're, let's say buying essentially a piece of packaging, that's only used once that's single use type, whether it be recycled or composted, that's disposed of at home most often, whereas a reusable piece of packaging can either be kept and refilled at home, uh, refilled in store or brought back to the store to be reused. And so what that is essentially is an extended touch point with your customer. It's right. saying that, you know, you have this piece of packaging that's not being tossed away right away. Yep. So it's a continued touch point. And for our brands, we've noticed that it does lead to increased repeat purchases because they're bringing wow. back that piece of packaging to them with the store. And then they can most often buy another piece of packaging and they know what they need to get because they just brought it with them. Yeah. So there are those really interesting benefits. They come in the form of repeat purchases, brand yeah. loyalty, but also brand awareness. It's the type of thing where if your company is one that is reusing, definitely ahead of the rest, right. companies will learn to know it, that yours is the one that's doing that and will know that, you know, company XYZ is already on. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of talk in the industry about how sustainable packaging is more expensive. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly negating that with, with stories like this, where, yeah, maybe it's a larger investment up front, yeah. but your long-term outlook is much less mm -hmm. uh, as far as cost of packaging goes. Because, I mean, how many times, for example, can one of these glass bottles be used? Well, I mean, this, the thing with glass is like, think about how many times you reuse your glass at home. It's yeah. the same quality to a large extent. And the thing to note here is that, you know, for some companies, it's actually less upfront because for these glass jars we're working with, we help them reuse the same packaging that they've already reused. And now they're not having to import it from, you know, across the ocean. Yeah. They have it kept within a local economy that packaging's reused, all that needs to be done to it is, you know, driven that 
10, 20 kilometers to the site right. to sanitize it and bring it back. So most often than not, what well, we can actually provide a cheaper jar back to that company up front. Of course, when you're establishing those molds and things in the beginning sure. for new packaging formats are transitioning over to, let's say, a plastic jar to a glass jar, there are going to be those price bumps. But with the benefits that reuse provides, I mean, we just talked about some, it's pretty quickly seen that those benefits heavily outweigh those costs and definitely make up for them. Yeah. Well said. And are you finding it a challenge to scale to other locations? Mm. Is it, that I think that's an interesting one because that, that would be the initial thought just because, you know, you have retail stores and you would need more drivers and more collection sites, what have you. What we found was actually a sort of interesting networking effect that we didn't really expect at first. And you don't usually hear networking effects when it comes to packing All right. is that these brands and retailers are highly connected. And at the end of the day, they both want this system to work because it benefits both of them. Mm -hmm. When a customer in our reuse system is bringing back their packaging to the store the same way they bring their reusable bags, they're getting more customers to come more regularly into their store, which is a huge benefit to them. And from the brand's perspective, you know, they are getting those benefits of reuse that we already talked about. So what we found actually is that retailers are often talking to the brands that are working in their store saying, hmm. we have these collection bins for, you know, other companies. We work, as you know, with those glass jars. So they talk to their others and say, we have this great system here. We can start collecting your packaging. Yeah. You don't have to change it and we can start reusing it. And from the brand perspective, they're, you know, we've sent them these small things that they can print out and put in boxes of, you know, new product. Uh, right. That's essentially a little thing that says to the retailer that says, Hey, we already are collecting our packaging in these different stores. Yeah. We want to collect our packaging in your store as well. We think it will benefit both of us. Yeah. So it's that, you know, growing the brands helps grow the retailers and vice versa. That's yeah. really great here. And not to mention that, you know, a lot of the brands, they don't only sell just in one city, they sell in many. So right. we focus on Toronto and well, for right now, but we know for a fact that a lot of interest is also in, you know, Vancouver or yeah. Ottawa. Yeah. So those cities for us to expand into would have definitely a smaller startup energy, I guess you could say, to actually get that system going because those brands are already there. Yeah. It kind of just expands like a spider web, it seems mm -hmm. just to just kind of just broaden every so many miles or, or kilometers, as you say. Yeah, kilometers, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, for the American audience. Yeah, no, appreciate it. How do we get in touch with you? Yeah, so you can find me at circular.ca. And the key point here is that it's spelled C-I-R-C-U-L-R. -R. So we were talking about it earlier. It's circular without the a.ca, which is sort of funny if you're thinking about the Canadian heritage in <laughs> right, a, right. but, or you can directly, you know, find me at charles at circular.ca. You can directly reach me there and we can have a chat, whatever it'll be about. Excellent. Well, thank you, Charles. Really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Hopefully.